What's up guys, Dr. Gooden here to show you how to run a one-way ANOVA in SPSS with a post hoc analysis. Now we use ANOVA to test whether there are differences between three or more groups of data. And essentially what we're doing is seeing whether these groups, these samples, come from the same population. Now remember that an F statistic from an ANOVA does not tell you which of the groups differs significantly from the rest, it just tells you whether or not one of them does. And so if our F statistic is greater than the critical F and our p-value is significant, well then we need to follow up our omnibus ANOVA with a post hoc analysis. So I'll show you how to do both of those things in SPSS and I'll show you how to run the omnibus ANOVA in two different ways. Here we are in the data set and we see that it is a group of athletes, three different groups from basketball, football, and tennis teams. There are 20 athletes in each group. And the, that, so the type of athlete will be the independent variable and the dependent variable is IPF, which stands for isometric peak force. Now isometric peak force, uh, if you're not familiar with kinesiology, it is the amount of force that you can produce uh, with either a certain joint or with your whole body without actually shortening the muscles. So essentially these athletes have stood on force plates, they've gripped a barbell that is not going to move, it's fixed in place. They grip it, they get into what we call the power position, and then they pull as fast and as hard as they can on the bar, and that generates force with their whole body, and it pushes that force into the force plates, which, which can then measure the amount of force and the rate of force that they can develop. So it's a very safe and valid and reliable way to test strength. And it gives us this great reading of isometric peak force, which we have measured in Newtons. So that is the dependent variable in this case. And our question then is, is there a statistically significant difference between these three different groups of athletes? So the null hypothesis is that there's no difference between means, and then in fact they all come from the same population. The alternative hypothesis is that somewhere in these three groups there is a, um, a difference in the group means. Now there are technically three ways to run an ANOVA in SPSS. You can go up to analyze, you can do it through the compare means and then the means function, although that's fairly limited and so we're not going to discuss that in this video. The most common way to do a one-way ANOVA is to go down to where it says one-way ANOVA. Um, surprise, surprise. However, in order to do this, we need our grouping variable or our independent variable to actually be coded numerically. Because if you notice, I'll click on this and it'll let me drag athlete over into the factor slot, which is where we need to put our independent variable, but there's no option for sport. We need to uh, somehow turn sport into a numerical coded variable. So to do that, we need, we need to go up to transform, then down to automatic recode. And I've already done this uh, once before. So I have it in there already. So what I've done, let's, let me move it back. So we take sport, that's what we want to recode. You can double click on it and bring it over to this window and it asks for a new variable name. So let's put in a new name and I'll just call it sport code because that's very literal, easy to remember. And we click add new name. So there we go. Now we click okay. And Excel is telling us that it's making a new grouping variable. Here's the new value for each of these. So basketball will be one, football will be two, tennis will be three. So we need to remember that. Basketball is one, football is two, tennis is three. Now we can go up to analyze and go to compare means, one way ANOVA. We already have isometric peak force in our dependent list and that's good because it's our, our dependent variable. We can take sport code then and bring it over into the factor spot. Okay, so now it's going to group our data by sport code, which we know is the sport that each athlete plays. And it's going to look for differences in the IPF values of these groups. Now we do want to do a post hoc follow-up and I've selected a two key post hoc follow-up because we do have equal N in each of these samples. So the same size groups throughout, each group has 20 athletes. And because it's a fairly conservative uh, way to adjust the alpha level so that you avoid family wise, um, an increase in the family wise error or the type one error rate. Remember that type one error is a false positive. So we really don't want to find any significant differences if in fact there are none. 
right? We want to find real differences. So we want to be uh, conservative and we don't have too many comparisons to do. So Tukey should be an okay one to do. Other common ones are Bonferroni or um, the LSD, which is least significant difference. Uh, you could use Chefe if you want to say combine two means of, of two different groups and compare it to a third group. So there's lots of options um, in kinesiology. Uh, we tend to stick to Bonferroni and Tukey, and there's a couple of other adjustments we can do as well that aren't actually on this list. So let's, oops, let's leave it at Tukey, we'll click OK. Let's go down to options because I do want to make sure I have these uh, descriptives checked. We want to examine those and we want to test for homogeneity of variance because remember uh, we need to um, have equal variance or, or more or less equal variance in each of our groups. Really, we don't want any of our groups to have twice as much variance as any other group. And it gets really bad if you have nine to one uh, variance. So one group having nine times more variance than the other, that means you've violated it really bad. Um, and although ANOVA is robust to violations uh, of this assumption, we would have to select a much more stringent alpha level. So we wanna check on that. And let's click continue and then okay. All right, now we can examine the descriptives first. It's always a good idea to do that, just so that you know kind of what to expect. The football team had the largest mean by far oops, at 5,594 Newtons. Basketball was next with 3,800, and then tennis was last with 2,500. And that kind of makes sense if you think about differences between each of these athletes, how big they are, and how strong and powerful they need to be for their sport. Now it looks like uh, we did not get any significant p-values for the test of homogeneity of variances, and that is a good thing because if it was significant, it would mean that it did not uh, pass this assumption. So this is great, we have homogeneity of variance, and we can go down and examine our ANOVA. Now, it's important to remember that you don't want to take a peek at your postdoc tests before you've looked at the ANOVA. If you don't get a significant uh, p-value, or a, an F value that is above the critical F, then we don't want to proceed with the postdoc analysis. Now, in this case, we do get a significant P value. It's significant at the level of P is less than 0 0.001. And I think we can actually double click on this. If you take a look, there we go. Oh, it's so 8.037 8 times 10 to the negative 34th. So a very, very low probability that we would have gotten our results uh, due to chance if the null hypothesis were true. That's what that's telling us. A very high F value. We see the mean squares. Remember the F value is a ratio of the mean square between groups to the mean square within groups, right? It's a signal to noise ratio. So it makes sense that the mean square between is much larger than the mean square within groups. And now let's examine the post hoc analysis uh, because we don't know exactly which groups are significantly different from which other groups. Is football significantly different from tennis or also from basketball? We're not really sure. So this uh, multiple comparisons table will tell us just that. So what we see in this column, uh, basketball here in the first uh, first column, first row, compared to football, let's see, it is uh, there is a statistically significant difference and basketball compared to tennis, there is a statistically significant difference. And then we go down, football versus basketball, which we've already seen above. So there, there will be repeats of these. Each one is shown um, at least twice. And then football compared to tennis, and there's a significant difference. And so we see across the board that the differences between each of these sports, basketball, football, and tennis, is statistically significant uh, at P less than 0 0.001. Now, if we come down and examine the mean plots, you can see what this looks like graphically. Now, when you're examining the results, you always want to start with the descriptives, then move on to the assumptions of ANOVA, and then uh, look at the ANOVA itself, and then move on to the post hoc analysis. So now let me show you another way to run this ANOVA. We could go up to analyze, down to the general linear model, over to univariate, and I've actually already uh, put this in. So I put IPF as the dependent variable, just like before. And for fixed factors, we can use either sport or sport code because uh, doing it this way, we can use non-numerical variables or nominal variables. So we don't have to have sport coded into numbers. We can just use the normal string variable there. 
So in this case, let's create a plot, put export on the horizontal axis, and we'll add that. We'll include a reference line for the grand mean and error bars. Continue. For post hoc, we'll bring sport over. And if you're doing a factorial ANOVA, then you might have to bring over multiple factors. In this case, it's just a one-way ANOVA. And we'll select two key again. Click continue. And let's click OK. And so now we see uh, much of the same data presented in a slightly different way. So here's our ANOVA results. We can ignore the corrected model for now. Uh, we just want to look at this sport column here. And we see that it is significant, again, at the same level. And the mean square and uh, within and between are the same as what we calculated previously. Now scrolling down to look at the post hoc tests, again, we get the same values as is expected. We can ignore this homogeneous subsets for now. We won't be going into that. Uh, in this video, but then just come look at the profile plots. Now this gives us uh, the grand mean here. So in relation to the grand mean, where do the other groups fall? And remember that between group variance is really the variance between each group mean or each sample mean and this grand mean. And the within variance comes from each individual data point uh, and its distance from the, the group mean that it's placed in. And then we get these nice error bars as well. Okay, and that is two different ways to run an ANOVA analysis or a one-way analysis of variance in SPSS. Now, if you guys had any questions, uh, let me know down in the comments below. And I forgot to mention at the beginning, you can actually follow along with this video by clicking on the link down in the description. You can download the file, open it up, and follow along with me uh, as I walk you through it. Now, we can also run an ANOVA analysis in Excel. So go ahead and click on over to this video to check that out. It'll be somewhere over here on the screen or head over to my in-depth lecture all about one-way ANOVAs where we talk about the logic of the F statistic, why we use a one-way ANOVA instead of multiple t-tests, and some different methods for post-hoc analysis. Um, all right, guys, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys on the next one.